Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Very well. All right, so we're going to be speaking today on preparing yourself for today's world. Success for me came with so much work. Success for me came with so much anticipation. As a young girl in this world of worry, with the family, did I say six? Having to understand that a system called worry would not appreciate a different child. Imagine a child yearning for snow to fall in Nigeria. Imagine a child waking up to see that, oh my God, I'm up in the sky flying. Imagine a child pulls away from the regular Nigerian slang, worry slang. Yet, it seemed like a far-fetched dream. One day I told my mother, I'm tired of being in worry. I'm tired of being in Nigeria. Can I just go somewhere else? And she said to me, have you had your breakfast today? And I said, yes. She said, was there anything in the food? Why are you speaking as though you were high on something? And then she said, go and do the dishes. I knew that I was born different. I knew I wasn't meant to be regular. I knew I wasn't meant to be conventional. And so whilst in the dark of my thoughts, I went to the bed and said, Lord, can you just make a way for me to know who I am? I'm tired of this identity crisis. One day, a neighbor came with the news that he was getting married. And so, he said something that got me excited. He said, my sister is coming from the UK with her daughter. At the time, I had the faintest of knowledge of the UK, but I knew it wasn't something like worry. True or false? That's right. And so, weeks came in, and the sister daughter. The woman, the little girl, walked into the compound. She said, hello, good afternoon. And I'm like, yo, that's it. Aha. Uh -huh. It wasn't the new week kind of thing. And so for the next two weeks, I was receiving lectures from this six-year-old girl. Six-year-old. I, uh, I would say she wasn't aware that she had a, a student in her class. And so every morning, I would wake up and I would go to the window and I would just listen to her speak. That was the only different English I could hear. I would go to the window and I would hear her saying, Mother, can I have a breakfast? Oh, can I have some cup of coffee? Can I have some plates? And I'm like, oh, yeah. And so every day I would go, I would wake up as though I was going for lectures. Then I was still in primary school, no doubt. So one day I got to the window and I was taking down notes. The only means through which I could record the session was by mimicking her. And when she says, oh, that's natural, I would go and say, that's natural, not natural, natural. And I kept mimicking, kept mimicking. I would write down, I would say it about seven times. Remember, I came from a family where that wasn't allowed. So who do I practice with? One day, my grandmother, who came in from Lagos at the time, said, come and pound some yam for me, some yam for me. And I said, okay. So I said, oh, what do you want me to pound for you? She said, eh? <laughs> me pound. I said, no, Grandma, I want to pound yam for you. She said, no. The next thing I saw was her fingers on my ears. Me pound. Me pound. I said, Grandma, no, don't do it, don't do it. And she was on me for like 20 minutes. My mother came back from work and she said, I said, my mother, look at what grandma did to me. And grandma said, oh, in your own language, you're still, you're still speaking English language. You're not ready. And she went for the round two of my beating. That was enough for me to let go of my dream. But I knew something inside of me was bubbling out that I need to arrive at my destination. I need to get to this particular location. And this is not the means through which I would get here. So, 10 days after, my mother came and said, we're well, going back to the UK. I felt my walls and my world crashing down. Who else will teach me this English? 
And my dad would say to me, let it go. You're not meant for this thing. I knew I wouldn't walk the way people were walking. I knew I wouldn't dress the way people were dressing. I knew I would not eat like people were eating. So why am I different? I couldn't tell. I couldn't fit into the system. And someone said to me, you know, you are in this location. Accept who you are. Just accept it. And I said, I'm made to be the influence. I make it through my society and my system, regardless of where I'm from. So years went by. I began to seek education in this field of my passion and purpose. And one day, I was actually having some little gigs on public speaking, on emceeing jobs, on maybe little bits here and there to great occasions. One day I got a call to empty an event. It was actually a mess event of politicians and school owners, a dinner. And someone said, you're going to be the MC. And I thought, yeah, this is my big break. So I got ready that evening. My mother was also getting ready. She was a school owner. Not knowing we were attending the same event. And so she said, I'm going for one big event today. Ah, oh, that event, the government will be there. In my heart, like, is that not where I'm also going? But I didn't say it. I wanted her to see her daughter without a superstar. And so I got ready. And as a host, you have to be there on time. So I got there on time. And I started my job. And she came in. And she's like, is that not my daughter? And the moment I saw her, I pressed my shoulders. Ladies and gentlemen. And she's like, that's my daughter. That's my free spring daughter. And she went around telling all her school owners' colleagues, like, that's my daughter. She went ahead and said, that's my third child. Like, mother, take it easy. Just to ensure they know that this is my daughter. And years went by. One day she said to me, because of you, I was honored today. I said, explain. She said, I went for an occasion, and I forgot my past. Whilst the event was going on, the bridegroom or so recognized her and said, that's Mrs. Anderson's mother. Let her in and bring her to the high what? Table. And she went there. She liked good things. She just sat there. And she's like, guess where I'm at? I said, where are you? She said, I'm at an event right now. I entered with your name. And she felt so good. The next time she was at Airport Road, she saw my billboard there and she called me. So her friends would know that she knows me. She said, hello, my daughter. I said, yes, mom. She said, I told you. I told you. And she said, thank God you did not derail from your path, from your purpose. So then we were able to speak at events written several books, attended several occasions, I'm also a minister, and because I did not let go of passion and purpose, I did not let the people around me define my path. Whether we like it or not, the voice of God is enough to make us shift our thoughts and purpose. Older sister called me. She said, I'm very sorry for what I took you through what I made you go through as a child. Today I'm now a bank manager and I'm a school owner. Would you come train my, my children at school? And I said to her, sis, are you aware I'm now expensing? And she said, yeah, my sister. I said, but that's, that's history now. Let's talk about business. That's right. And I gave her my six-figure bill. She said, ah. Was it English? I knew what it said. That was history. You are paying for the pain, paying for the torture, <laughs> and all of it together. She said, you're not a child of God. Leave it that way. At the end of it, I'm going to be leaving you with six principles that worked for me. The first principle is to be unapologetically you. You do not need anybody else to tell you who you are. Sometimes you feel that there's something inside that you need to do that is calling you to become. 
If it did not follow after that, it would not find purpose. It would not find fulfillment. Sometimes you may be unhappy. I'm a psychologist. I will tell you what that would be. You just tell yourself, I don't know why I'm happy, even when I have everything in line and in place, because purpose is calling out. Come, come. But you were held down by your society and environment. Remember I said, I'm going to be the one to influence my environment. When I had my first event in Worry, some tell you to have an event in Worry. No, go to Lagos. Go to this place. Go to to be where? In Worry. And guess what? He wanted to see if it was going to be a success, so he bought a ticket. And he came quite late, so there was no seat for him. And I was like, I never knew it was going to be this kind of success. Whilst he was yet in the event, a young man stood and said, I want to say something. He said, I've questioned myself for many years. Can anything good come out of worry? And he said, now I can answer. Yes. Something good can come out of where? From worry. And over the years, I've been able to host several events. I had a friend that went to, who invited me to the US to speak. And she said, I've heard about you. I just want to see, I want to, I want to come close to you. The next thing I had to do was develop my confidence. I began to work on my confidence. I knew I'd been flattered enough by the, you can't do this, you can't do that. No, you, why would you do that? No, no, you're too big, you're too small for that. I began to work and build my confidence like one building her muscle. I would read materials. You know, back in the day, I was in nursery three then, and my teacher said to me, oh, test of the class, we're going to be having a dictation session. It was about fat cat sat or fat cat sat on the mic. Remember that? Okay, so in nursery three, she said, if you can, Take down these dictations. You're going to have a gift. So I was excited. I took up my paper. I began to write. At some point, I said, wait. Are you sure you're writing out a poem? And I looked at the supposed intelligent girl in the class. I thought she was more intelligent. I saw she was still writing. So I stopped for a moment. I said, no. Wait, I think what you're writing is wrong. What she's writing is correct. I said, I said, Angie, 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 what is it? Can I see your work? And she showed me. And I saw it was everything out of what I was writing. 